Welcome everyone to the weekly Chabura. This week's Parsha on the Chabura is Vayigash. And I will tell you, I wait all year to give this Chabura. I, give, I say a lot of the same stuff, you know, pretty much every year. But uh, I added a, a few more uh, Divrei Torahs that I think is going to be very powerful on the Parsha. But this is a tremendous share. And this is the type of share that you listen to, even if not during Parsha's Vayigash. Because the lessons that we learn, learn in it and the greatness of Yosef that we could see from this Parsha is something that I think can uh, affect us positively um, through the course of the whole year. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank uh, Torah anytime, like I always do, and Chazak. Uh, for everything that they do, for all the mysterious nefesh that they uh, that they do for Kali Yisrael, you know all the videos and the and the and the shiurim and the and the and the and the events that they run, just to be makar of Eden. Of course, I work for Chazak Baruch Hashem, and I go to so many public high schools every single day. And I and Baruch Hashem, it's just a big schus to be able to help all the Eden um, that we are able to. Um, this year, I want to dedicate to a special friend of mine, a special chaver of mine. He's also my Talmud. His name is Dr. Ira Savetsky. Um, I'm zoichet to learn with him many, many uh, Fridays of the, of the year. He takes it from his busy schedule. He is a very big plastic surgeon in Manhattan. And it's a big schuss to, uh, to be able to ha- talk to him and discuss um, the Parsha with him every single week. It's also his birthday. I think he's... Th- 30 years old? No, he's actually 40 years old. I was just playing around. He's 40 years old, and uh, Baruch Hashem, you know, he's zeichut to bring up many, you know, three children, and they should, he should have lots of nachas from his mishpacha and uh, for many years to come. I'd also like to wish a mother tov to a Talmud of mine, Dr. Uh, Dr. Reb Eli Salmanzada, who actually had uh, twins a few weeks ago. The names of his children are Gabriella Rose and Noah Abigail. And may he be zeichet to walk them down to the chuppah, and that they should be married to husbands who are b'nai Torah and truly yari shemayim. Mazel tov to you, to Reb Eli and his mishpacha. I want to start off by discussing the greatness and the aside of Yosef Hatzadik. Who Yosef Hatzadik was, and no matter how much I will talk about Yosef, the hiddenness of what Yosef really was and the greatness of Yosef would probably take months upon months to really see um, the greatness of who Yosef was and to even understand on our level the greatness of Yosef compared to the true greatness of Yosef, we probably don't have really an inkling of how great Yosef was. Um, It's a tremendous share and we're going to go into many, many different proofs of where we see the great midah that Yosef had of self-control. Now we do know that Yosef was a great, a big Talmud Chacham because Yaakov taught him all his Torah. Hazal tell us that all the Torah that Yosef knew, he got directly from his father, and his father considered Yosef the forebearer of all the Torah that he was taught. So Yosef was really the one that actually Yaakov gave over the secrets, the Yesaidas, the Niglais, the Nisterais of, uh, of his Torah to Yosef. So Yosef was a big Talmud Chacham, big, big Talmud Chacham. Besides for his being a big Talmud Chacham, we know that Yosef was a big Anab, very humble. He always, always had Hashem on his lips. He always gave Hashem the credit for any benefit, which he should, obviously. But he gave all the credit to HaKadosh Baruch Hu for any good thing that happened to him. So he was a very humble person. He realized that it wasn't him. He even said that the selling of the brothers to him, he told the brothers, the selling of the brothers of him was that Hashem said, did it. It was Hashem's cheshben. It was never somebody made a mistake or somebody had a problem. It was all HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which shows tremendous anava, tremendous humbleness. But I think the, the midah that stands out, the trait that stands out the most in Chazal of who Yosef was, was his self-control. Yosef's self, self-control was, every time he had self-control, we could learn lessons our entire life. We know the Gemara tells us that if somebody, after 120, goes up to Shemayim, and he's sitting, standing in front of the Bezdin, and he tells Bezdin, he tells the, the upper courts, the higher upper courts, the Malachi Asharis, whoever is judging him, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that he had taivas, he couldn't control himself. Therefore, that's why he never learned enough Torah, and that's why he had other issues, because he was a big Baal Taiva. He had, you know, he had so much good in his life. He was a good-looking guy, he had a lot of money. So the Malachim are going to tell him, the angels are going to tell him, were you greater and more handsome, and had bigger tithes than Yosef? No. And yet, he never sinned once. So Chazal is telling us right away that 
if we want to know who is the person that actually um, stands up for self-control, the one that we learn self-control from, the ultimate self-control was Yosef. He was the ultimate in self-control, in controlling his desires and not giving in. He was so many years in Mitzrayim. He was so many years in, the, in a terrible, terrible place. He was torn away from his father's Torah, from his father. He was torn away from the family, from the brothers. He was torn away from his, his ruchnius. And he was sent to the worst place in the world at the time was Mitzrayim. And yet he was able to have self-control the whole time he was there. But I, that's just on an overview. I want to show you specific details of where we see Yosef's great self-control, not just in Inyane of Arias, not just in two, a relation matters, but even in his daily living, the self-control that Yosef had. Now we do know, I'm going to go we'll jump ahead a little bit to Parshas Vayechi, and then we're going to go back to Parshas Vayigash. We do know that Yaakov, when Yosef and Yaakov met, Yaakov, what, you know what, let me actually go to a timeline. I think this is important because I worked on this timeline a little bit. It didn't take a long time, but I worked on it a little bit. The timeline of Yosef's ages in Mitzrayim. Yosef was 17 years old when he was sold. When he was sold and he was kidnapped, he was 17 years old. Then he spent 13 years working for Potiphar and being in prison, which means he worked for Potiphar one year. Then he was thrown into prison for another 10 years, which were, was added another two because he said Zechreini and he said, he said two words to that he should be remembered by the butler to, um, to Paro. So he spent 13 years in prison, which means 17 and 13 means he was 30 years when he became viceroy in Egypt. When he became in command, he was 30 years. 17 years he was sold, 13 years he was in prison and working for Tifa, and 30 years when he became viceroy in Mitzrayim. Now, we do know that when he met his father, it was nine years after that. So he was 39 years. Why? Seven years of plenty when there was no hunger in the land. There was plenty. And two years of the hunger, the brothers came down already. And then the, he revealed himself, and then, um, and then he, um, he met his father. So that's, he was 39 years when he met his father. And for the next 17 years after he met his father, he did not see his father. And that's what we're going to discuss right now. It's brought down that Yaakov met Yosef one time, Chazal tell us. Yaakov met Yosef one time when he, after the 22 years that he was missing, that he didn't see Yosef, he met him one time. And then for the next 17 years that Yosef was in Mitzrayim with Yaakov, ya Yosef never visited his father. And Chazal tell us the reason why Yosef never visited his father was because Yosef was scared that his father would ask him what happened, and he would have to reveal what happened about what the brothers did to him. And this would, Yaakov would end up, not, I don't like the word cursing, but Yaakov would be very angry at what the brothers did, and who knows what would happen? Who knows what would happen? So even though Yaakov, Yosef was so close to his father, Yosef was so close to his father, Yosef loved his father, besides as a father, but as his main Rebbe, as his main Rebbe, Yaakov was Yosef's main Rebbe, and yet, and yet, Yosef did not visit his father one time for the 17 years after Yaakov met initially with him, till right before Yaakov died, and then he called down Ephraim and Menashe, and he wanted to bless Yosef, because Yosef did not want his brothers to get hurt. Unbelievable self-control, unbelievable self-control. He didn't see his father, his Rebbe, but not to hurt his brothers that his father should find out. But the Maise, the Chazal tells his father did know what happened. His father knew what happened. And we don't see that Yaakov actually asked Yosef, where have you been? There were no messages that Chazal tell us that Yaakov sent messages, where are you? I met you yesterday. I don't see you anymore. It's been a week. It's been a month. It's been a year. It's been 10 years. It's been 15 years. 17 years. Yaakov and Yosef are living in Mitzrayim. And Yosef doesn't visit because he doesn't want to hurt his it's his brothers. But why didn't Yaakov ask Yosef, where are you? Where are you? <laughs> I haven't seen you. He showed up one time and that's it. I'm your Rebbe. I want to teach you. Before I die, I want to teach you. So in reality, Yaakov did know what happened. But Yaakov also had self-control by teaching Yosef self-control. What does that mean? That Yaakov was teaching. Yaakov knew that Yosef didn't want to come for that reason. So the Rebbe was teaching the Talmud as well as the Talmud was learning from his Rebbe not to, to have that self-control. Because that's the Mida that symbolizes who Yosef was. Incredible. Yaakov never asked Yosef why he didn't visit him, because he knew, he knew that Yosef, so therefore he was building Yosef 
For every day, every month, every year, Yosef didn't visit his father. In reality, he was being built, and Yosef knew that too. Yosef knew that his father didn't ask him because his father was happy that he didn't meet him to ask him. So the Rebbe and Talmud relationship was taking place even though they weren't together. Unbelievable self-control of Yosef. Let's go a little further into Parshas Vayechi and then we're going to go back to Vayigash. Parshas Vayechi, Yaakov finally calls Yosef over. And what does he do? He tells him, please bring your children over. I want to, actually, Yosef brought his children over to be blessed. But Yaakov has called Yosef over because he's about to die. The Mitzrayim went to Yosef and told Yosef, your father is sick and he's on his deathbed. Do you want to come see him? Right? Or Yaakov sent for him. So Yosef went. I think Yosef went himself, actually. Right. He went himself. His father didn't even call him. Correct. And then he was told that Yosef is coming. Yaakov didn't even ask for Yosef right before his deathbed because he was still building him. Yosef felt he has to go to his father now with Ephraim and Menashe. So what happens? Yaakov starts by telling him, please don't bury me in Mitzrayim. Please don't bury me in Mitzrayim. It's not a good place. I want to be buried in Mitzrayim. I need to be buried in Mitzrayim. He goes through a whole arichas here. The Chazal tell us why he went back and forth. But he tells Yosef like this. When I came from Padan Aram, Mesa Alai Rachel. This is what he tells Yosef. Rachel passed away. Eretz Canaan, Baderach on the road. Ba'ot Kivas Eretz. We were close to the land, but we were not in the land. Lavo Ephrasa, to come to Ephrasa. Ve'ekperasham. And I buried Rachel Imenu right there on the road. Not even in Ma'ar Samach Pela. Yosef knew about Ma'ar Samach Pela. And, Yosef, and Rachel is being buried on the road, right? Baderach Ephras, he based Lechem. So Rashi says like this, I didn't even enter her right to Bethlehem. It wasn't that far. At least she'd be buried in Eretz Yisrael. I know. And even Marcin Machpelah, which was close by. And I know that you have it in your heart against me, which is Peladic, that Yosef still has this in his heart. That's what Yaakov is saying. You should know, you should know, I buried her there on the way for a reason. She should be for a help to her children. When Nevuzradan is going to ascend Kla Yisrael during the Korban to Golas, they're going to pass by Rachel's caver. Rachel and they're going to stop to daven there. They're going to stop to daven there. Rachel Akivra Rachamim, and she's going to daven to Hashem. To have, she's going to see her children on the road, and she's going to daven to Hashem for Rachamim. like it says in the pasuk, a weeping, wailing sound is heard. which is Rachel is crying on her children. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu answers her, This, you're crying. There's going to be reward for your crying. There's going to be reward for your crying. And your children are going to go back to their boundaries. So lost in this Rashi, possibly, are three interesting words, which is what I want to focus on. Yaakov tells Yosef like this, I want you to know that I buried your mother on the road. I buried your mother on the road. And you should know that I'm sure a 17-year-old boy that loves his mother like, ya- like, like Yosef did, he protected her from Asaf. He loved his mother. It's his mother. They, ya- Yaakov buries her in the desert. It's not like what you have today, houses and, and stores. Even in the place over there, it looks pretty bad. But, but and because of the people that live there, whatever, not except for the Jews that live there. But it, it's, it's run down, but it's not, like, it's not like empty. And here, he buries her like in the... I hate to say it, even like I remember when I was a little boy and I saw a cowboys, cowboys and Indians where, where somebody dies on the road and they just put like in the sand and they put like, uh, like whatever, uh, pieces of wood over there to, 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 to say this is a place of somebody being buried. But, and then Yaakov continues on the road. Now, Yosef at 17 should have asked his father, you know, Abba, I have a question for you. I'm not trying to, you know, I have a question, not because I'm questioning you, but I just need to know why. Why are you burying Rachel Imenu, my mother, on the side of the road over here, and just continuing, right? But you see from this that Yosef never questioned his father. That Yaakov has to tell Yosef, and this is the three words I want to tell you. I know that you have in your heart, four words. I know that you have in your heart against me still, that it still bothers you. It still bothers you. That why I buried Rachel on the side of the road, your mother, and I didn't even bring her into Eretz Yisrael, which was nearby. And I didn't bring her to the Maris HaMachpelah, 
I know it bothers you. So let me tell you why Yaakov says I did it. Which, again, lost in the words, you see the self-control of Yosef. That he never questioned his father why. That it still bothers him. Yaakov knows it still bothers him. And he never asked his father innocently why. Just give me the reason. Even at 17 years old when it happened. Abba, why are we leaving mommy in the side of the road here? We're just digging a ditch and we're putting her here? Unbelievable self-control of Yosef not to question his father. Unbelievable self-control from Yosef not to question his father. So now let's go back to Yaakov. Why did Yaakov not tell him? Because Yaakov knew that Yosef's greatness was what? Self-control. Yaakov knew that Yosef is going to need for the rest of his life to teach us what self-control is. So he was building Yosef till the very last moment when he's about to die. When he's about to die, he was teaching him to the li- So why is he telling him now? Why is he telling him now? Because now he's asking Yosef to do the exact thing that he didn't do for him, for his mother. I need you to bury me in Mar Semach Pela. Don't bury me here. Bury me in Mar Semach Pela. The exact opposite of what Yaakov did for Rachel Imenu, he's telling Yosef to do for him. So we see an unbelievable lesson in Chinuch. An unbelievable lesson in Chinuch. That contradiction is already too much for a person. Yosef can handle everything. I'm not going to question my father. But when it comes to me asking you to do something that I myself don't do, that's already too much for even Yosef HaTzadik. Therefore, we see that our greatest mission in life, in Chinuch at least, when we're bringing up our children, when we're dealing with students, is lack of contradiction is the worst thing you can do. The lack of contradiction is the most important thing. If you're going to have contradiction in what you do, that's the worst thing that can happen. So even Yosef at Sadiq, on his level, couldn't handle the contradiction according to Yaakov. But you see unbelievable self-control again from Yosef at Sadiq. You see unbelievable self-control from Yosef at Sadiq. Unbelievable self-control. So again we see self-control from Yosef. We see unbelievable self-control from Yosef. We see it again that he didn't visit his father. We see it again that he, did, he buried Rachel Imenu on the side of the road. And Yosef never complained to his father, even though it bothered him till this very day it bothered him, Yosef. So Yaakov was building Yosef, Yosef was being built again. And when it comes to contradiction, Yaakov had to say. Now let's go back to Vayigash. In Vayigash, I want to show the greatness of Yosef's self-control when it comes to Inyoni Arayas, when it comes to women, subjects regarding women. And we see an unbelievable things here. We know that Yosef ran away from Potiphar's wife. We know that he was put in prison for it, right? Um, so we see unbelievable things regarding that. Now, the, the Pusik says like this. There's a Pusik that says, Vayoyim Yisrael, when Yaakov was already told that Yosef was alive by the brothers, what does it say? Vayoyim Yisrael, Rav, the Lush and Rav, I want to know if this Lush and Rav, I didn't look into it yet, I should have looked into it before. But this Lush and Rav, Yaakov, the other time that it says the Lush and the word Rav, is when Yaakov Avinu tells Ace of Yeshli Rav, I have enough, Yeshli Rav, I have enough. And over there, he, Ace of said to him, Yeshli call, I have, oh, I'm sorry, actually, he says he had a lot, but he had, I just want to know what the word Rav over here means, but let's not discuss that now. But, Vayom Yisrael, Rav O Yosef Benichai. Again, like I said, I don't know what Rav means. I mean, it means plentiful, amazing, special Rav. It's, it's enough that O Yosef bin Yichai, that O Yosef is alive. Eichel, let me go. And I want to see him before he dies. I want to see him before he dies. Now, the words here, Beterim Amos, is very interesting because there's no re- Yaakov doesn't have to give a reason why he wants to see his son. The reason why he wants to see his son is obvious because I haven't seen him in so many years. I want to see him. Why does he have to use the Lush and Beterim almost before I die? Yaakov had no idea how long he's going to die. According to, at this point, Yaakov should have lived to around 175. He lived to 147 for a different reason, because Yaakov was asked by Paro. We'll get into that next week's parasha. But what happens is that Yaakov officially thought he was going to live to 180, 175, like Avram and Yitzchak, because Chazal tell us that you live, the Gemara teaches us, that a person lives close to the age of his father. Therefore, Avram lived 175, because... The Torah teaches you so he shouldn't live to 180, so he shouldn't see Asaf. But really, he was supposed to live to 180. But because of Asaf, he lived to 175. He shouldn't see the evil of Asaf. And, and we know that Yitzchak lived to 180, right? And therefore, what? Yaakov should have lived within those two, um, either 180 or 175. So at this point, he was what? He was 
130. When he met Yosef, he was 130 years old. So he still feels he has another, I don't know, 50 years, according to the Cheshben. Yet, he says, let me see him before I die. No, I want to see Yosef because he's my son. That's question number one. Then it says that when Yaakov finally meets Yosef, it says something very beautiful. It says beautiful. Everything the Torah says is beautiful. It says, Vayar Elav Yosef. Yosef appeared to his father. What does that mean? That Chazal teaches, I looked in different Mepharsha, that Yosef actually stood erect almost, and waiting for his father almost to inspect him. Vayar Elav Yosef, that Yosef actually stood erect as if he's the king, he's the viceroy. Hug your father. No. He stood erect, as Kibrav Chazal tell us. He stood as Kibrav, but he also stood so his father, like almost like a soldier, when the officer wants to inspect if he's dressed nice and if everything is, is in order, he walks by him and he inspects him. Yosef stood erect, and he stood there. He appeared before his father. He appeared before his father. Why? Because his father wanted to see something. What did his father want to see? It says, Vayoyimi Yisrael al Yosef, Musa hapam. I can die this time. What do you mean this time? I could die. What's this time? Because in reality, he died in a way emotionally. He died spiritually to a certain degree. He lost Ruach HaKodesh for the years Yosef was missing. So that was more of a spiritual, emotional dying. Here he says he's referring to his dying physically. So what does he say? He says, it says, Vayomi Yisrael Yosef. And also, I just want to let you know that Yaakov, he's called Yaakov the whole time that Yosef, unbelievable, he's called Yaakov the entire time that Yosef was missing from him. If you look in the parashios, it says, when he finds that Yosef is alive, it says that Vayomer Yisrael Rav O Yosef B'nichai. Right before that, it says, Vatchi Ruch Yaakov Avihem. Yaakov Avihem, their father Yaakov. And he's called Yaakov, why? Because without Sarah, without Yosef, he's, he's, he's still Yaakov. Why was he able to fight Lavan and Esav, Chazal teach us? Because he had Yosef with him. When he had Yosef, he left his father-in-law's house, because now he has the power, right? Base, it says, base Ace of Lakash, base, base Yaakov Laish, and base Yosef Lahava. Because of the koach of the Torah and self-control and ruchnius of Yosef, Yaakov felt he can fight Esav. And therefore, he was given the bracha, Kisarisa Elokim Batuchal. He can fight the angels now, right? He can fight Lava and he can fight the angels because he had Yosef with him, right? Therefore, without Yosef living, that he thought Yosef was missing, he's always called Yaakov. But here the Pusik switches. When he finds out that Yosef's alive, listen to this. It says before, Vatkir Ruch Yaakov Yaakov found out, and his spirit rose, Var Yomer Yisrael. The Pusik changes him back to Yisrael. O Yosef ben Yichai. Because now that he has Yosef, he's back to being the Koach of Yisrael. That he could fight those evil forces because of the Koach of Yosef. Just wanted to throw that out. So it says, Var Yomer Yisrael, Yosef, oh, and Musa, Pam, I could die this time. Now I will tell you, Rachim, I know you make these videos. I want you to do me a favor, make a clip out of this particular piece. In other words, there will be an entire piece, but I want, because this is going to be fantastic, what I'm telling you. Everything else was fantastic also, but this is going to be really special. It says like this, Fayomi Yisrael Yosef. Yisrael tells to Yosef, again, I'm repeating it, Emusa hapam, I can die this time. What does that mean? Physically, I can die. Before I died emotionally, now I can physically leave the world. In other words, I'm ready to leave. Why? I can die. Acha reisi panecha, as panecha, now that I've seen your face, that you're still living. So Yaakov tells Yosef, I can die now, now that I see your face, that you're still living. So the kasha really is, is here is, why does the Pusik, why does Yaakov have to say, now that I've seen your face. What does the face have to do with anything? All he could, all the, all Yaakov could have said is that Yom Yisrael Yosef and Musa Pam, I could die now, right? That you're still living. Now that I see you're still living, I could die. What's the espanecha? What's the I see in your face? What is the addition of now that I see your face? So I saw, an, I saw a few unbelievable things on this. My brother, so Gazunzain El Yakim, who I always call. Um, for any Shaila I have. I used to call my brother Aaron, my brother Aaron Zatzal, or Aaron Walken Zatzal. I used to call him for Hashkafa, for every Shaila, every Pasuk, every Medrash, and he would answer me. Now that my brother is not around, I actually call my younger brother, who knows way more than me, way more than me. He knows where everything is, he has an unbelievable head, and he literally on the spot, he tells me things, you're Shaila me this, that. He's always on the spot, he always answers my call, which is also unbelievable, because I don't answer always people's calls, but he always, and if he doesn't answer right away, I'll say, can I call you back in two, three minutes, or and he calls me back. And on the spot, he always answers any Shaila, halacha, not halacha, so I always call him. 
So he told me a beautiful pshat also on this. But I'm going to tell you the first pshat that I saw, that I learned. Why does it say his face? Because if Yaakov, if Yosef would have sinned minutely, minute, even a little bit in Mitzrayim, he never would have been able to look his father in the face. He, from the busha, from the embarrassment of letting down Yaakov, he wouldn't be able to look him in the face. It's an expression that people say, look me in the eyes, look me in my eyes and tell me this, right? In other words, a guy who's honest, telling people could look at people's faces and just lie blatantly out to them. But in the olden days, you know what I'm saying, and especially with Sadiqim, it's hard, they won't, look, they won't look at you if they're embarrassed. They won't look at you if they're embarrassed for something. So Yaakov tells Yosef, and Musa Pam, I could really die this time. Right? Now that you came, first of all, to inspect, you stood there, you stood there confidently that I, you, could, I could, be, you could be inspected, but now that I see your face, that you're looking me in the face, now I can die. Now I can, knowing that you're still living spiritually, that you're still living. If Yosef would have sinned minutely in Mitzrayim, he never would have been able to look his father in the face. So Yaakov now sees your, Yosef's face. He says that you're still living, not physically living, but that you're spiritually living. Now I can die in peace, knowing that my legacy, your ruchnias, is intact. Unbelievable about Yosef. Unbelievable about Yosef. My brother added to this. He told me two things. Number one, he says to me that how did Yaakov, Yosef not sin? There's a, there's a Gemara that tells you that Yosef almost went to sin. The Gemara says he didn't almost sin. But there's a machlok with the Rav and Shmuel. If he, if he went there to sin or he didn't go there to sin when he went to the house. So according to some of Farshim, he went to sin. And he almost sinned. He almost sinned. But he saw the Gmasai, took Gmasai shall Aviv. He saw what? The, the vision of his father. He saw his father's face, Chazal tell us. Therefore, he saw his father's face almost like a gift to Yosef because of his self-control. Hashem rewarded him that he can have a last minute of a reprieve where his father's face will be shown and he will stop himself. So therefore, if Yosef would have sinned, he never would have been able to look at his father in the face. Why? Because that father's face was what could have stopped him. And if he would have sinned, how could he look that same face? How could he look at that face? So the fact that his father was, and his father knew this, that he saw that, obviously. And that's pshat, that what happened, that he never would have been able to look at his father in the face because his father sent him over, the Ebishter threw, yeah, sent him over a dugmasa that he could watch over himself. That he could watch over himself. Unbelievable pshat. Then my brother tells me something from the Chafetz Chaim that I think is unbelievable. Like I always say, everything the Chafetz Chaim says is unbelievable. Everything that's in Chazal is unbelievable. I just, it's unbelievable, like the other unbelievable things you see. And then I saw it actually from Rav Shmuel Birnbaum, the Rabbi Bender, Yaakov Bender Shlita, actually brings down Rav Shmuel Birnbaum, that he said it to him once also. Because I saw it in his book. He has a very tremendous book, Rabbi Bender on Chumash. I always look at it every week. It's good hashkafa and stories and really, really, really power. I love to read two, his two books on, uh, I go through 40 different svarim, 40, every single week on this share to know what not to say also, <laughs> to know what not to say. But I always go to his two svarim to just see what he says to get an idea. And he brings down Rosh Moberim, my brother said it from the Chafetz Chaim, and he goes back to the question that we had of Beterim Amos. Why did Yaakov have to say that, let me go down to see him before I die? Before I die, well, let me go see my, that's what we asked, uh, 10 minutes ago we asked that, before in the beginning. So he wants to say like this, Chafetz Chaim and Rosh Moberim, and maybe Rosh Moberim brings it actually down from the Chafetz Chaim, but he says like this, that Yaakov knew that if Yosef overcame the greatness that, that happened to him in Mitzrayim, he knew that he would never be Zaycha to see Yosef in Olam Hava. Yaakov Avinu, with his Torah, being an Av, father of, the, of, the, of, the, of the, one of the Avais, Yaakov felt that Yosef's greatness would be so great that he would never be able to see him in Olam Hava. So he says, I need to go down. He wouldn't be Zaycha. He wouldn't be Zaycha. I need to go down before I die so I could physically look at him because I don't think I will ever see him again in Olam Haba. Because of his greatness of self-control, he felt he wouldn't see him again in Olam Haba. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Yosef HaTzadik. I need to explain this to you, that when a person has nesyoyness in his life, when a person has challenges in his life, when a person is being tested in his life and he overcomes nesyoyness, he's on such a darga, he's on such a darga, that even a Yaakov Avinu felt that he won't be in the same level. And that could be what it means when it says, B'mokim Shabbat Tshuvim Oymdim, Ein Tzadikim Gemurim Oymdim. A Baal Tshuva, the Nebuch has to go through, so, not Nebuch, but is challenged with so many challenges, and he overcomes it to a certain degree. 
to a certain degree. Not saying he's higher level, but he's in a different level. Different level, whatever that means. Is he higher level, not a higher level? It's hard for me to believe that he means he's on a higher level, but a different level. They get different, set, you know, different rooms in, in the oil of Amos. But listen to this. Yaakov Avinu was scared that Yosef had reached such a darga of self-control in Mitzrayim that even Yaakov, with all his self-control, and even with all his suffering, would not be on the level of Yosef HaTzadik, and therefore he would never see him again. Not in the next world, and only in this world. So therefore, when he saw his face, he said, I saw you've not sinned, right? And you're still living, but I got to see your face. I got to see your face one last time, at least one last time. Unbelievable, and I want to tell you, to me, it's, you know, I, I, I have a Chase account, Chase Bank account. You want to check it up, you can check it up. No pun intended, check it up. But anyway, um, I have a Chase account, and they ask you questions when you start your, when you actually make your account online, at least. You know, security questions. One of the questions I always see is, who would you like to have met in your lifetime? And always, without even thought process, I write Yosef. That's what I write. So if you ever want to go into my account, one of my security answers is Yosef. Just, just, hey, listen, it's nothing to take. I'm just getting hot from I have everything I need. Yosef, I always write Yosef. Why? Not just because he was so good looking. I want to see how good looking can a guy be. But to see someone that was so good looking and the self control that he had in his life is so powerful to my life to, to know that somebody out there, many times when I was growing up, many times I was challenged. Not that I felt like that, but I had my challenges in life. And I always, when, whenever I overcame my challenges, it was always the, the thought of Yosef HaTzadik being in Mitzrayim, away from Torah, away from the Avais, being in a foreign land, kidnapped, torn by his family, hated by his brothers, sickest place in the world, Mitzrayim, yet he remained tzaddik. What a lesson, what a lesson for us in this Golas. What a lesson for us that don't say, oh, I'm in Manhattan, I can't control myself. Don't say, I have an iPhone and nobody's in my room, I can't control myself. Don't say, no one's looking, I can't control myself. Don't say, for a few moments only. Think of Yosef, the same way the vision of Yaakov appeared to Yosef. Try to, now the difference is, you know what Yaakov, he knew what Yaakov looked like. But the stories of Yosef, you can paint a picture of who Yosef was. So you don't need to physically see Yosef's face. You need to know his actions. So that Yosef, that Yosef Atzadik should be an inspiration to everyone in the world of self-control. And that's why in the Gemara says, in Bezdin Shalmala, when they ask a person, why did you sin? Why, were you, why did your tithes take control? You'll say, oh. They're going to say, no, were you greater than Yosef HaTzadik? Were you greater than Yosef? And look what he did. So he's Yosef. No, it wasn't one time. It was all the time. Yosef understood he has a mission in this world. He understood that his life is going to be a legacy for the rest of Kal Yisrael. I need to be on top of my game. I know that my actions are going to affect Kal Yisrael one day. I know that I can't do this to Hashem. He always said Hashem on his lips. The greatness of Yosef HaTzadik. I'm just scratching the surface of who Yosef was. But believe me when I tell you I'm scratching the surface. Who knows the greatness of Yosef? The fact that he didn't send a message. The fact that he didn't complain to his father uh, about Rachel. The fact that he didn't visit his father. The fact that he forgave his brother. The fact that he, he didn't sit in Mitzrayim. The fact, I mean, this is unbelievable stuff. Do you know how many times Yosef cried when his brothers came to him? The Pasuk tells us how many times he left because he couldn't handle it anymore. But he knew the brothers have to go through this. I'll go, I'll, I'll go back in. I'll go back in. Forget about my emotions. My brothers who threw me away, I don't care. I'm gonna, I need them to get forgiveness. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So I want to end with that. I want to thank you all for listening. An amazing share. Yes or not? Is that, the most, is that an amazing share? And it's not me. It's Torah. It's understanding. It's going through processes of understanding who our Avais were, who our, who our, who our G'daylim are. You need to not just read about it, but you need to internalize it. And when you internalize it, you change. You actually change. You actually grow. Because it's not something abstract that you read in a book. It became part of you. Yosef HaTzadik is Meschayev, is Meschayev everyone to self-control, Taivis, money, eating, whatever it is, self-control, self-control. Unbelievable. Because when you have self-control, then, then you can have a Kodesh Baruch Hu in your life. If you don't have self-control, then you're worshipping the thing that you have no control of. So you're not even worshipping Hashem. You're worshipping the thing. If it's eating, it's that. If it's drugs, God forbid, it's that. If it's looking at improper things, it's that. 
You're in control, whether it's a cigarette, you're in, it's controlling you. You need to be in control, and I give you all a bracha that we should work on ourselves and be zochen, not even to come to Yosef's level, but to understand the level, and that alone will protect us. Have a wonderful Shabbos, everyone.